Yo, welcome to the first official video. What's it episode? Anyway, of the channel. Again, hi, I'm the Hawk. Thanks for taking some time out of your awesome day, evening, afternoon, night, or whenever, decide, whenever you decide to watch this video. I appreciate you, dog. So if you saw the title, you have an idea what we're doing today. And you should also know, I'm a big fan of fighting games. I mean, I kinda just said this before in the trailer, but if you didn't know, I'm a big fighting games fan. And I mean, I'm pretty great at them. Not good, not average, great. You give me the fighting game, I sit down, like But none of that's important right now. That, I mean, just letting you know that. The new Guilty Gear is dropping in June. It was delayed. It's supposed to be April, but anyway, they delayed it. And they've been releasing character trailers for each individual characters that are gonna be in the game. Actually, a lot of fighting games do this now. Uh, they release a character every week, or I think King of Fighters re releasing them every week. And it's just that, you know, hype. Hype up the game when it's coming up. So I'm like, the horror. Let's do some fun art. Great idea. Wait. Let's do a little animation for each character fan art we do. No way, dog. We even better idea. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Then a reality check happened. Did you know there are roughly 12 to 24 images per second in an animation? One second, 24 images. And that's for some animations. Mm. Let's do a hack. Here's what I came up for for Soul Bad Guy, the first character they released. I know who I am. The Moonlight Lake told me this is who you are. Okay. So I'll be showing you how the first part of the trailer was colored using Photoshop, and then we're going to After Effects in another, how it was animated in After Effects in another video. This video was focused on the setup, the steps, and I'd say the style I used to color this is the illustration I did for the character. I'm using Photoshop to color the artwork, but if you have Procreate, Clip Studio, or any of one of those other digital programs, they're all, they're, they're all, they all kind of should work the same. You know, just a little bit here and there, but they use layers and the same type of tool. So you can basically copy the techniques I use in Photoshop and apply them to any one of these other programs. No excuses. I'll be using a digital pen for my Wacom Continuous tablet, but if you have an iPod, X Pen, a Heyoon pen, and tablet, they all kind of should work the same. So again, if you have an iPod, you just use the pen, you know. Whatever. So I open up the file in Photoshop. Uh, and the first tool I really use is the lasso tool. Right now I'm just cutting the shapes and I uh, just line up like skin. Right now I'm doing skin, so you know, getting all the skin areas set and uh, flat. I usually just go area by area by area. So like hair, clothes, stuff like that. So the layer setup, you can just be set up as lines, flats, and background. Go through layer and I line them up like that. So what I do is select the line, line layer, I go up, right click on normal, and then switch it to multiply. So I'll be able to see through the lines layer. So, you know, it's just a standard image. And then I switch it from that and it allows you to go from the black, only revealing the black and the white is left over. All right, so the bucket tool is the tool I use to, you know, basically fill in the areas right now. And we're gonna get to the brush, but I just filled in all the areas fast. There's a click, click and drop, you know, got my color swatch to the top left. That's all the colors up there. So before everything started, I got the original art piece for the character and just made a color swatch by just using the eye drop tool to just select the different colors and you know, like some of the shades. Usually I just pick a dark and then go from there and then branch off. So. I'm using a cell shading style, like anime style, so didn't want to go past two, two to three colors for one area, like skin tones and stuff like that.
All right, another tool I use is the rotate tool. Uh, it helps me, you know, why I heard it in my head like that. Just use the rotate tool and make sure in, when you're in Photoshop and you color in, make sure it's full screen. You have it set to full screen. So it, it does a really little weird thing where it kind of aligns right or aligns left for no reason when you rotate it. Uh, so the shortcut for the rotate tool is R. I mean, it's like really my most common used tool. I don't really, I don't even know how to call it colors, but anyway, I ramble it. Also, when planning the piece, I had an idea where the light was coming from. So the light is hidden so from the top right. Uh, that's where the color is going to start. Top right, and also like a stand. That's where the sun coming from. Uh, being that so, you can see his smile and well, you know, think, uh, his, his attitude, so the mindset of the character. Uh, he's a tough, rough guy. So if I uh, this is more of an animated coloring style I'm using, uh, you can see some little hatches, lines I'm using. I usually go more detailed than that, but I said for this one, I'll just be a little easy, plus I'm animating it. Uh, so we're getting ready to go into the actual coloring piece. So what I usually do, it works like this. Above the flats, so sometimes I just put the flats into different flat areas, like different colors like that. But, you know, you could, you could be lazy. <laughs> but, so it'll be like a flat color for the face, flat color for the hair, flat color for every single bar. So what I'm doing is basically separating them and adding them. Different flat layers for different clothing. Uh, one of the key things you do when you do the flats, you're gonna make a layer above it. That's what you're actually doing, the color layer. And you right click and you go to create a clipping mask. And what it does basically is it keeps everything, that above layer, when you color using the brush, it stays in that exact layer. So if it's a complete circle, at the bottom I draw a square to the top, it only shade in a certain it's like the that's why you did all this setting up. It's it's a lot of work to set it up, but after that, everything runs smoothly. I wish someone had told me this earlier when I was younger, but you know, you gotta learn. You learn as you go, I guess. You kinda hear the secrets. What I'm doing here is in the shadowy area I like to put like a purple-ish, like a dark color, you know, basically to separate a little bit of skin to a little bit more. It's just it's a preference you don't have to do it. But I, I like doing it kind of make stuff a little bit more shadowy if that's how I could be a word. And I also did where the rim lights is gonna be. Uh, I like to do that sometimes. It's an either or type of thing. You put them in where you want. And then you know slowly from there I go from piece to piece, eyes, teeth, headband, just knocking out the different shades and uses of the color. Friskets as they call them, what I make. It really no science matter, just what I feel, how I feel, the light, it hit it, the texture, you know. Okay, let me check my note and just let, let it rip, let it go, you see uh, the process.
So it's more noodling, uh, knocking out the collar and all the different pieces like that, you know. It's, it's, it's fun, you know, put, your, put some good music on, make some coffee, you know, just sit down and get ready to go. It's just sitting there noodling, it's mindless after a while. You, you don't try to think too much about it, once you have an idea what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I have fun doing it. Uh, I recommend <laughs> if you can get someone else to do the flash for you, that's always a win, but then you have to pay them. But if you're trying to save money and pay on the budget, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's your goal. I don't mind doing flats. I actually like doing flats. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing flats. I like doing flats. For the background, the Saudis actually, and I didn't really draw it. Uh, I kind of just did that because I put it in the back separately. I'm gonna use that when I'm animating. So you know, it's like, oh, let me have a little fun. Don't plan everything too much ahead, and you know, just cut shapes and color it. It gives it a different dynamic. Like he's detailed more in the front, while the background, you know, more obscure. They usually add it. So you focus more on the main. You 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 color and you draw, but you want people to focus on. That's how I think. Well, that's the mindset for it. And you know, you just keep repeating that color system for each part. And There you go. A little bit of bright and little contrast and some levels and you know, get your finished project. Basically ready to go. Well, to go to After Effects for the animation, but it's the color part. Basically done, the hard part is done. All right, that's the first video done. The coloring all done. We're gonna jump into After Effects. Next video, the finish is bad for ya. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. If you like this type of stuff, hit that like button. And if you know someone who really into this art stuff, or you know, just, Making stuff. Send in this link, share it, yo, share it. Subscribe, like, share, it's free. All the fun content. See you in the next episode where we animate this bad boy in After Effects. Peace. Yikso.